Welcome back to the lab folks. We've got most of the snow cleared away, so uh, we're operational anyway. A few uh, things like the back deck and stuff like that, they're still uh, covered in snow, but I'll get to that, no emergency on that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to, we're going to build up my little AC load idea using this. It's a 200 watt variable resistor here. And I was originally going to use these. Uh, really heavy duty looking, very uh, snazzy binding posts with uh, four millimeter sockets in them. This is a knob off my signal load, but uh, yeah, I, I, this is going to be just a placeholder. I have another one of these coming, but it's, it's been taking, it's been, it's been on its way now for more than two months. So I have my doubts about whether it's going to get here at all. And I was thinking, you know, this is this is uh, 50 ohms, 200 watts, which means it's a, a maximum of two amps you can pass through this, uh, even if you have it turned down or wherever you have it. It's going to be two amps maximum. So I, I don't really need uh, 50 amp binding posts. These uh, these little ones here, which can handle easily can handle 10 amps, will do fine. So I'm going to use these instead. And another reason is that these big chunky things uh, they can't get. The standard spacing apart of, of 19 millimeters but these can so i can arrange them in standard spacing not that that's really important it just uh appeals to my ocd and uh yeah so i'm going to put these on there probably in a little triangular pattern like this so i can plug things in whatever way i want and on the back here i'm going to use this little fan i might think oh wow that little fan's not gonna be enough you know this actually this spits out quite a bit of air so it's going to go right on the back precisely behind this blowing air on it and it actually does blow quite a bit of air at five volts it's uh it may even be noisy but um it it's nice and small compact and so on the back i'm going to have um, the fan a switch and uh, a dc power jack here so i can put five volts into it to run the fan and I'm going to wire up the main thing here with this uh, number 14 silicone wire. This is a really nice wire. So I'm going to, it's way bigger than I need for two amps, but it's, it's a nice wire. And I'll, I'll wire up this to the terminals with this using these uh, crimp on terminals there. So we're going to get started on this. I'm going to, I'll mount this as far over this side as I can. You notice I, I flattened off the edges here because it, it actually just wouldn't fit in there. And I'm going to mark this as far over to the edge as I can without touching the side here to leave ample room for the binding posts over here. And I was looking around for an ammeter to go into it, but I really can't find anything suitable. Um, that's a, a, an ongoing thing, but I'd like to have an ammeter that fits up here. The center of it, the movement of it will fit down in there and yeah. So I'm, I'm looking for that and I can retrofit that at some point. But I've got to get this going. I've promised the use of it to a friend of mine who's uh, working on a little audio amplifier and needs a, a, an AC load. And uh, okay, so I'm going to get started on that. And uh, we'll come back at different stages to show you how the progress is going. So the first thing will be to mark out the hole for this get it drilled and when I drill this panel I'm going to drill the back panel the exact same spot so that I can make sure that the little fan is centered directly behind the, the pot. All right I'm going to get to it. All right I've got all my holes drilled this is the front panel and uh, here's the back panel and I painted them black with some uh, enamel and then put them in the oven for uh, about an hour at 225 degrees to bake them so we'll get a good hard finish and now I just have to wire them up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the back one first and we'll get that wired up and uh, try to make sure that the fan works when we switch the switch on so I will do that over on the soldering bench and come right back so I'll need this 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 my fan screws okay so here's the back panel is done got a switch on in this direction and it should be off in this direction fans mounted and it's all wired up let's get uh, a feed coming down from a world war eliminator 
and we'll plug it in here and turn it on. Oh yeah, it's not too noisy, do you hear it? But it does blow a lot of air and uh, that's the reason I'm using this little fan. I originally got these to put on uh, motorcycle goggles. I wear glasses and so my uh, glasses fog up inside the motorcycle goggles. So I put these on in the motorcycle goggle in where the, the air filter part of it is and uh, run it a, a little three cell AAA battery pack. And uh, that's great and it lasts for a couple of hours so it lasts for a good long ride. And uh, that's why I got them for. I had some left over. So that works. Anyway, I've got to get this finished today and hand it over to my buddy so he can get his project started this weekend. All right, so let's, uh, let's move ahead now with the front panel and we'll come back and try to assemble all this. Okay, I've got the banana plugs. Find the sockets in there and their standard spacing, more or less. So that's good. Now I've got to I've got to put this in from the back. It won't go. I can't put this in and then put the panel down. The panel has to be mounted first. So let's do that. Let's get the panel all mounted up here with at least a couple of screws. Yeah. Now we have to get this in here and wire it up. I wonder if it's easier to get the wires on first before I actually commit it to the. Now what am I going to put? Blue is going to be the center. Blue is my red here. And then the green will be all the way over this way. So that'll be the bottom one. And this will be the yellow. Okay. This is real nice wire, this uh, silicone wire. It's very, very flexible, very nice. And it, it strips very nicely, but resists heat very well. Really nice stuff. Uh, this, uh, I got this a little while ago off of Amazon. I'll leave a link to it down below. And there's no, it just didn't come with any washer for the. I'm going to see if I can find one. Hold on one minute. Yeah, I wonder if this one. Nah, it's way too big. No, I don't have a washer that'll fit that, unfortunately. So this is going to scratch up my fresh paint here. Okay, that actually wasn't too bad. It's just a scuff. <clears throat> now we'll put a knob on it. Okay. That's that. <clears throat> Let's uh, put the back on it. Okay, 
Okay. Looking pretty good. We'll have to maybe put some sort of labeling on it. Well, I want to get that meter in there so that the label down here on it. Eventually, eventually. Okay. Let's see if we uh, hooked it up right. Okay, this should go down as I turn this way from here. And up as I turn from there. And down this way. It's working. Let's get a power supply on here and put some energy into it. So across the 50 ohms, we have 5 volts. And we're getting 10 milliamps. Okay, 32 volts. We got 610 milliamps. 1.5 amps going in there. So there's about the 2 amp, amp limit. And this, this end of the thing should be getting warm. And it is. It's not getting warm terribly quick. Okay, now I switch on the fan here. I see that keeps the temperature pretty reasonable. I wouldn't want to keep my hand there for very long, but uh, so that's one of the reasons I like to get an ammeter in it because this two amps is really just the maximum here. I see you bring it down to an amp. I see that fan brings the temperature down. Oh yeah, it cools it right down. Okay, good. All right, there it is, all finished. Our little AC load. Well, finished for now. Again, I am going to try and look for a little meter I can put in there so I can monitor the current doesn't go above two amps. Um, but that's it. I'll leave links to you know the box and the rheostat and whatever. I might not be able to find everything, but uh, I don't think I'll be able to find that little fan. But if you were to build one like this, you could put any fan in it you want. I just happen to like that little fan. I had have, happened to have one lying around. But there we go. So in the meantime, until I do get a, a, a meter for it, I'm going to be using something like this to monitor the current through it. I know it's a little bit of a hassle having to get out a second device, but until I find the uh, suitable meter, Nothing else I can do. I don't want the thing to go up in flames. The hardest part of, as I said before, was finding that hardware. And uh, of course, you know, drilling the panels, that always takes a while. This hole here, I had to make it one of those step drills because I didn't, I don't have a punch that size. And uh, the rest was just, uh, just all drilled out. But just making sure that everything is, is, you know, you got the right spacing between things and stuff like that. I know it's not important to get this at a standard spacing, but if you can, why not, right? See you in the next video, folks. Bye-bye.